What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So two months ago, Google launched probably the best phone they've ever made, the Pixel 4a. In a world where six and a half inch phones dominate, it was a comfortable, compact device, a nice change of pace at 5.8 inches. People, I'm sure, have grown tired of forking over $1,000 for a phone, too, so its $350 price tag was also super enticing. It technically was this sort of sidestep successor to the Pixel 4, but also not really, because it ended up feeling like a brand new device with a fresh design and different set of features. And while Google very well could have compromised with a lot on the Pixel 4a, it was still pretty much the complete package at the time. I think the huge success of that phone likely inspired Google to take on a new direction for their new flagship phone, and that seems to be how we ended up with this the new Pixel 5. While in years past, Google would try and compete with the likes of Samsung and Apple in launching a high-end, high-priced device, this phone, which is still technically Google's highest-end flagship, is cheaper than in years past, it's simpler, and I consider it to be the first flagship Google device that's made for the masses. Now, I'll just say this up front, that I really like this phone, just like I liked the Pixel 4a, and I'm going to talk about my experience experience with this device after using it now for more than a week, but I also want to explain where I think this phone fits now in the sort of broader smartphone lineup as a whole, how it compares to the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 4a 5G, and most importantly, if it's even something you should consider. So right off the bat, let's actually talk price. The new Pixel 5 comes in at $699. There's no other configuration options. There's no XL model. It's just one price for 120 gigs of storage and two colors, sorta sage green, which I have here, and just black. This certainly keeps things pretty simple, and I think price-wise, it's also very attractive. It's $100 cheaper than what the Pixel 4 started at last year. It beats the new iPhone 12. It makes the flagship S20 line feel way overpriced, but this late into the year now, it does have some stiff competition. The S20 FE, for example, which has arguably better specs all around, is actually priced the same, and some carrier deals might even make that phone cheaper. Also, Google's own lineup now has a few more cheaper options too. Like I said, it now includes the Pixel 4a at $349 and the 4a 5G at $499. So Google somehow simultaneously cut the price of their flagship phone while also introducing some compelling alternatives to it. But with all that being said, I do still think the Pixel 5 is priced right. I do think it's still competitive, even given its specs and features, and I actually think there's enough here to differentiate it from Google's new lineup as well. So let's now talk about what exactly makes this phone stand out. Physically, the Pixel 5 is made from recycled aluminum. Its metal housing is nicer than the plastic of the 4As and more durable than glass. And the light texture coating gives it some grip too. One thing to note though is that the coating actually hides the fact that the entire back isn't actually metal. You can kind of feel out where the center is plastic to allow for wireless charging and reverse wireless charging to go through. It's great that those features are there though and you wouldn't even know that it isn't a uniform metal rear back anyway. And the phone is still IP68 water and dust resistant as well. At exactly six inches, the Pixel 5 is also a great size. It's a little bit bigger than the 4a, but interestingly enough, the 4a 5G is bigger than this at 6.2 inches. So that's a little strange. But in the hand, it's compact, it's comfortable, it fits well in your pocket. And this new Pixel 5 also offers a refreshed screen design. And that makes use of every square inch. There's no notch. There's no big top bezel. It's a corner to corner screen with a simple corner camera cutout as well. And if you're familiar with the Pixel line, you might realize that this change eliminates all those sort of experimental sensors from Project Soli. There's no motion sense.
instruments or radars or anything like that. And to be honest, I don't know that those were ever worthwhile additions to the Pixel 4. Also, this Pixel 5 sort of takes a step back, but I consider this move a positive. Google re-added the rear fingerprint sensor and dropped face unlock. Nowadays, this setup is obviously more convenient than ever. It's the same fast, accurate fingerprint sensor you would expect. It's certainly a welcome change. One physical change I actually think that was a negative is what Google did with the speaker setup. The Pixel 5 offers dual stereo sound. There's the single speaker down below by the charging port and a secondary speaker in the earpiece. But unlike the Pixel 4a, where the earpiece was a small slit with a speaker grill, the Pixel 5 has the earpiece and speaker combo totally under the display. This means that unfortunately, this secondary speaker I don't think is as good as it could be. It doesn't get as loud, it's not as crisp. It is still stereo sound, but Google probably should have just kept things simple here. Just stick to what works best. The 6-inch screen on the Pixel 5, at first glance, isn't anything too groundbreaking. It's a 2340 by 1080 OLED display, with a decent pixel density actually at 432 pixels per inch, since it is that more compact size. It's covered in the newer, stronger Gorilla Glass 6, so in theory this phone should be even more durable. The Pixel 4a's only get Gorilla Glass 3, and on its own, it's a fine viewing experience. The real added bonus here, though, with this phone is actually actually the 90 hertz high refresh rate option. This, I think, is what makes the viewing experience, but more so the user experience, stand out most. This is not something you get on the Pixel 4a's, it's not something you get really on too many other phones at this price point, like Samsung's A71 5G or even the iPhone 12's. And to be honest, I think it should be considered a selling point for this phone in particular. Compared to the rest of the smartphones on the market, the OnePlus Nord does get 90 hertz as well. The S20 FE actually has 120 hertz, but I think well into 2021, high refresh rate will finally be standard on a lot more phones in that $500 to $700 price range. And I consider Google now to be a company trying to get this feature into the hands of more people at a more affordable price point with this phone. I don't know that the average consumer will go out of their way to get a high refresh rate phone right now, but experience just how fast, how smooth, and how responsive this phone is with that option is probably something that will influence people to jump on board. I know I have seen the light with 90 hertz and 120 hertz refresh rates, and I'd much rather have that versus QHD resolution, for example. The super smooth and super responsive feel of the high refresh rate screen paired with Google's well-optimized software, of course, yields probably one of the best overall Android experiences on any device. This phone ships with Android 11. It's of course very much Google-centered. The software experience alone I think is still why a lot of people gravitate towards these Pixel devices. But it would be a bit unfair of me to praise all of that while ignoring the maybe less than ideal specs Google packed inside. On paper, the Pixel 5 is powered by the Snapdragon 765G chipset, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigs of UFS 2.1 storage which by the way is all you get. There's no SD card expansion here. Now, I don't think the 765G was the worst choice in the world. I've done side-by-side -side comparisons with the S20 FE, for example, which has the Snapdragon 865. And the difference, while noticeable, I don't think is drastic. Eight gigs of RAM, in my opinion, is plenty, considering that Google has a lot more control over optimizing that software. Sort of similar to how Apple does it with less RAM on the iPhone phone. But the older internal storage option is a bit of a bummer. That slows things down a bit, and it's actually quite a leap back when you consider a lot of Android phones now ship with UFS 3.0 and even Samsung's 3.1. Collectively, there's nothing about the specs that makes for a less optimal experience. Everything from casual social media scrolling to heavy gaming feels great. And I do think that app management actually
actually is done better on the Pixel 5 when compared to some other devices. I found this phone just kept a lot more stuff running current in the background, but objectively, you just don't get as good of specs for the money when compared to some other devices. And the Pixel 4a 5G has the same Snapdragon 765G processor inside, just with six gigs of RAM instead of eight. So that only adds to the competitiveness within Google's own lineup if you're strictly looking at specs. All in all, I just wish Google took maybe one more additional step in offering a more powerful device on paper and a more different device spec-wise when compared to the 4A 5G. And actually, one thing that really surprised me about performance was battery life on the Pixel 5. The 4080 milliamp battery inside is a decent size when looking at capacity alone, but in real-world use, I never had an issue getting through the day with usually 30% or more battery remaining. For me, that's six to seven hours of screen time at least, though I don't always push my phones too hard. The only critique I have is just that the included 18 watt fast charger and 18 watt max charging speed, while good enough, it is a bit behind the times when other companies have pushed for 25 and even 45 watt charging speeds now. Finally, let's talk cameras. And for the first time in a while, we have something new here. The rear setup has two lenses, a 12 megapixel main shooter, which has been used for a number of years now, but a new 16 megapixel ultra wide, something Google laughed at just a year ago when it suggested telephoto was more useful, but I guess they changed their mind. Up front, it's the same eight megapixel selfie camera. And if there were ever an example that defines the idea that specs are not everything, the pixel of course would be it. If you're just looking for the straight answer, yes. The Pixel 5 I think is still one of, if not the best, picture takers out of every smartphone available. Google's software puts in a ton of work to yield a well-optimized shot, no matter the condition, and the wide angle is useful. Sorry Google, it's just the better option versus telephoto. You still get some zoom capabilities anyway if you need to use that, and with selfies, the pixel blows away the competition with just the amount of detail it preserves in every shot, and with portrait modes in particular, the edge detection is nearly perfect. But I do think that this is likely the final year where Google can rely solely on all of its software tricks and image processing to produce its good looking results. Other phones like the S20 and the Note 20 Ultra and now the iPhone 12 Pro all have incorporated more hardware to better analyze and interpret scenes. Their lenses can likely take in more light. They can make more use of camera tech rather than software tricks. Is this still the best phone for snapping a simple pic? when you get the most detail, the most true to life color, the best dynamic range? Yes, I think so. But I also think looking ahead, it is time for Google to finally make some drastic changes to the hardware in order to stay on top. So here are my final thoughts on the Pixel 5. This was 100% the right move for Google. This phone is a great value for the price. It's competitive in its space, but at the same time, I consider the Pixel 4a and Pixel 4a 5G to potentially be even better deals based on what you have value-wise. The 90 hertz display is a selling point on this phone with this price tag. The phone is still one of the best for pictures. It's refreshing design makes it look modern, and it's nearly the complete package with none of the extra gimmicks that might have otherwise driven up the price unnecessarily or maybe turned away the average consumer. If this is the direction Google continues to go in, abandoning the flagship space and offering a super competitive, reasonably priced, well-rounded devices, I'm all for it. I just think they are maybe still a half step away from being totally there. So there you go. Those are all of my thoughts on the new Pixel 5. What do you guys think about this phone? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.